I am Susan Kander and I'm a composer and a librettist. I came to it in a little bit of a zig and a zag. I studied music in college. I went to Harvard and I studied music back when Leon Kirshner was still floating through the department now and then. And I was thrilled when I got my first or commission for a full orchestra in 2008 from the National Symphony Orchestra. Uh, I had never written for a large orchestra before and um, it was for a piece with narrator and large orchestra for young audiences. Miranda's Waltz premiered in May of 2009 at the Kennedy Center and as with all uh, orchestral compositions, the composer is not allowed to record them without getting permission from every member of the orchestra, without paying a large fee and so forth and so on. It's almost impossible to get a live orchestra recording for a premiere. So it premiered and then I had nothing to show for it. I had nothing to hand to a conductor or a music director or an artistic director and I was busy with other things and I just let it go. The piece is published but the publisher doesn't have a demo to send out with the score. I was hesitant about doing any kind of virtual realization of this piece for a number of reasons. One is that uh, it, it, I thought it was just going to sound hopelessly virtual. But another was the piece is very much meant to entertain and it's, it has sections that have to go um, with great humor and uh, there's sections that are like Looney Tunes, there's sections that uh, there are very sudden changes in tempo, very sudden changes in mood, and I had trouble imagining that without the human component of a conductor and responsive human beings playing instruments that uh, it would just come out sounding like a glorified MIDI score. And uh, I can make a MIDI score, but I wouldn't let anybody listen to that as a representation of my piece. Um, and so I didn't, I just didn't think it was possible to get anything like a performance. There could be a rendering, but there couldn't really be a performance of this piece, and therefore I just put it out of my mind. Um, so I was all that much more flabbergasted when I got the first draft from you, and I felt like there was the hand of a person actually conducting and shaping this music, and all the music fits inside bar lines on paper, and uh, in terms of data, but it comes out, it, it has come out f uh, with this uh, rendering sounding like there's a person in charge. And I'm very, I'm very shocked and totally thrilled about that. It's just, it's just amazing. The process of working with you was made to order for somebody as uh, electronic phobic as I am, uh, somebody who feels like I, I just struggle to do what I do. I write the music, I get it into the computer, I think it up, but beyond that, it's energy I don't have to spare to figure out what the next steps are to do. So working with you was incredibly easy, not to say pleasant, um, and when you delivered the first draft, it came, and I was already very shocked by it when I first listened to it in terms of a performance. And I went through it and I was, it was wonderful to be able to talk about fermatas and to talk about tenuto marks and to talk about accelerandi and things like that, like I was talking to a conductor, and um, make changes and talk about how the harp sounded and we talked about how the solo string sounded and you were able to make changes and you really did exactly what I asked you to do on, on that draft. And when the second draft came back to me, everything that I had asked for was done. And, you know, that doesn't happen very often in life. <laughs> that you, you really, you can issue some corrections and they come back with a smile and they're done. And that was really spectacular. Now that I have this, I have 12 minutes in seven different excerpts now from this piece, Miranda's Waltz, 
So I feel like I can, my publisher, more to the point, can contact artistic directors, programmers, conductors, none of whom will sit down and read a score, and most of whom will listen to something in their cars, maybe. Um, they have 12 minutes uh, with these seven different excerpts. Some of it is just thematic material, and there are three big orchestral sections to, to give a, you know, I think a very solid idea of what's inside this piece. Um, so they now have something to really try to engage uh, programmers. So far, I've played it for uh, a few people, all of them musicians, and they've been pretty gobsmacked by it, frankly. Up until now, um, you know, I heard it in the premiere. I heard two performances sitting in a hall, and prior to that, I had heard it in my head, and I had heard it in, uh, in MIDI uh, playback on my computer. And it really wasn't until I listened carefully to this performance of these, sec these sections that I was able to say, ooh, that spot I don't like so much there, that's my fault. I didn't do that right. Rather than, um, oh, the conductor didn't do that right. I'm able to actually look at this music and hear the music now outside my head and hear things that I didn't orchestrate as well as I could have. It's an incredibly useful tool for that. Um, MIDI is useful for finding out if you've you know, got your if you actually written the notes you intended to write, um, but and are they in the place that you intended them to be? But you can't really tell um, orchestrationally if you've you know got too much going in the bass. And here and there, I've been able to see measures or sections where um, I would have orchestrated, or in the future would orchestrate differently. Uh, so it's been really good for teaching me. Um, those sorts of lessons. And I imagine for anybody, uh, it would be just invaluable.